guys! Welcome back to CJ's Keto Kitchen. Well, the temperatures have definitely dropped and it's a wonderful time of year to begin our seasonal baking. So tonight I'm going to be making very traditional cookie and it's going to be white chocolate chip macadamia nut cookies. So come along with me and let's get started. So white chocolate is um, traditional mixed with macadamia nuts in cookie form. You can buy the giant containers of them at Costco and places like that. And sometimes it can be something that people on this lifestyle tend to miss. But I have worked um, very hard to try and change this recipe into a low carb option and still make it something that you can make with not a lot of difficulty, but it does have some essential steps. And I'm going to be going over those essential steps while I'm making the recipe. And it will also be on our blog to assist you in how I feel that this recipe has been perfected. So well, with that information, let's go ahead and get started baking some cookies. To start our cookies, we need to do a couple of things first. So one of them being we need to preheat our oven to 350 degrees. We are also going to need a cookie sheet. I am using a silicone mat on mine. We have some linked in our Amazon favorites. I really do love the silicone mat. If you do not have a silicone mat, I would suggest using parchment paper. Also going to need a medium sized bowl because we are going to be starting with our wet ingredients to make our cookies. We are going to cream our butter and our alternative sweetener. So the other important first steps that you're going to need to pre-do, I have a room temperature egg here that I have left out for several hours. If you decide that you're going to make cookies at the last minute, you can put an egg in a cup of warm water for about 10 minutes and it should bring it to room temperature. I also have room temperature butter. So it's quite soft. I have just let it sit out for several hours in a warm room. And it's very important to have softened butter in this step and also a room temperature egg. I'm gonna put our softened butter in the bottom of our medium sized bowl. and we are going to need a half a cup, which is one stick of butter. To that, we are going to add sucrine gold, brown sugar alternative. And we're going to need a half a cup of this. Uh, Swerve also makes a brown sugar alternative that you can usually find on the grocery store shelf, but I do really like the sucrine gold brand. And we're just going to firmly pack our brown sugar into our measuring cup. And once again, that is a half a cup. We are also going to put in about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. You can add a little more if you like vanilla which I do and we are going to beat the softened butter and our brown sugar alternative before we add our egg and you can see how nicely everything creams together when your butter is nicely softened now we're going to add our room temperature egg. And we are going to beat that in. Everything is nicely incorporated with our wet ingredients. 
we're going to set this aside and begin assembling our dry ingredients in a separate bowl. So you don't need a super large bowl, but I have a smallish bowl and I also have my sifter. And I'm going to put everything into the sifter and then sift it all together and that ensures that our dry ingredients are well combined. First thing that we are going to need is one cup of almond flour. The next thing we are going to need is a quarter of a cup of coconut flour. Our next step is two tablespoons of whey protein powder. I just have the unflavored kind, but vanilla would also work well in this step. Whey protein powder is very easy to find even on grocery store shelves. I double checked my local Walmart and another Walmart in my area, and both of them carry protein powder just on the shelves, usually in the pharmacy areas where you find uh, the supplement type things. Of course, you can order it or you can go to a, you know, a Whole Foods or a, you know, Vitamin World or whatever you have. But a lot of people practicing the ketogenic lifestyle will sometimes make shakes and that kind of thing. So you might even have it on hand. I tried very hard for this recipe. I have done it multiple times trying to find out what is the best binder for this. I tried xanthan gum and I didn't feel like it gave as much body and thickness to our cookies as using a whey protein powder in this step. So I definitely recommend the whey protein powder and I really cannot think of an alternative that works as well as this. So this bag um, needs to be used by the end of the year because we have had this bag of protein powder for probably at least a year. So it it is not cost prohibitive when you think of the amount that you're going to use, especially if you don't make protein shakes on the regular. I have used uh, whey protein in several of my recipes, including my bagel dogs and my bagels, because there's something about the body of the whey protein that helps with the thickness and the stretch of baked goods. So it's, it's definitely something that's nice to have around and it's going to last you for a while, especially if you don't make um, protein shakes on a regular basis. Also, in addition to that, this has zero carbohydrates in it. So definitely, you know, check your macros. Um, this one happens to be an unflavored product, but it does have zero total carbs in this. So it is a, a really good choice. And I can link this one. I do believe we got this one on Amazon, but you can find whey protein powder products just locally in your town. So our next step is going to be two teaspoons of baking powder. We're also going to add just a little bit of salt. Of course we had salted butter, but I still like adding just about a half a teaspoon of salt. <clears throat> Now we are going to sift our dry ingredients together. And by doing this, you are ensuring that your leavening agent, which is the baking powder, gets fully incorporated into our almond flour so that you don't end up with clumps of leavening. Because that can be quite distasteful if you ended up with a clump of leavening in one of your cookie bites, that wouldn't be very good. So by sifting them, you are not only getting your almond flour as fine as possible, but you are also incorporating your ingredients evenly to make it for an evenly tasted cookie. And I like when I sift to go both one direction and then back up and go the other direction. That can sometimes help the rest of your things break up. And then you'll see in the bottom of my sifter, I ended up with some big clumps. So then that makes sure that that didn't go into our, our cookies. Okay, so I am going to begin slowly incorporating, you can see our butter is nice in there. 
So I'm going to put half of this in there, mix, and then do the other half. So there is our batter. Now we need, of course, the stars of the show, and that is going to be our white chocolate and our macadamia nuts. So I have five ounces of macadamia nuts here that I have roughly chopped because we do want some smaller pieces, but also some larger chunks so that when you bite into the cookie, you know that you are having a white chocolate macadamia nut cookie. Then the other thing I am putting in is four ounces of white chocolate chips. These are sugar-free product. These are Bake Believe. I love a good pun, that is so funny. And these are Stevia sweetened baking chips. And I have found mine at Walmart and they are half the price of Lily's chips. In fact, I don't think Lily's makes a white chocolate chip at this juncture to my knowledge but the macros on here are very good. It's 10 total carbs with three dietary fiber and then seven erythritol, so it's essentially zero net carbs for these. So in my research, I have um, discovered that even baking with your regular, full, fully sugar-loaded white chocolate chip, they are a very finicky product. And part of that is because even though they are called white chocolate chips, white chocolate does not actually have any cocoa in it. So it is not really chocolate. It is a cocoa butter product and it is sweetened either with sugar or in this case stevia and some waxes and some vanillins. So the very nature of white chocolate is very delicate and finicky. It tends to break down a lot quicker because it does not have that cocoa to give it the heft to stay whole. So white chocolate is a lot more um, delicate and it can be a little bit more difficult to work with. So I have uncovered several things that will help us in this particular cookie recipe, but it is not just because this is a low carb product. It is simply the nature of white chocolate chips in general. So I'm going to put these in just by hand with a spoon. We're not going to use our mixer anymore and I'm going to try and fully incorporate this so we have chocolate chips and macadamia nuts in most of our cookie batter. So when we go to scoop it out later, we get an even product. Now, my next tip. So remember, our first essential tip was room temperature butter and room temperature egg. My second essential tip that cannot be ignored and I would not attempt these cookies without this step is you must chill this dough. This dough requires chilling, not only for the butter and structure of the white chocolate chips to hold together, but it also increases the thickness of your cookie. So when we put our cookie on the cookie sheet, because it has been chilled, it gives the right amount of timing between putting it on the sheet and baking it in the oven for the cookie to maintain its shape. If you do not chill it, the tendency is for white chocolate chips to spread. And that will come into play later on in my third essential step for this recipe. But the one that you need to remember at this juncture is we are going to stir this and incorporate it and then I'm going to put this into the refrigerator to chill for a minimum of a half hour. You could actually chill this overnight and it would be even better. Okay, there is our finished dough. And I'm going to put this into my refrigerator for a half hour and then we will be back to put these on our cookie sheet. And all of the information that I am talking about with the essential steps will be part of our blog post along with the recipe so that you will be able to go back and refer to the steps just to make sure that you're comfortable with this dough. So 
I have let my cookie dough chill for an hour. So it's nice and chilled. And as soon as I scoop out cookies for this tray, I will put this dough back in the refrigerator. Another important suggestion is if you're going to be making the entire batch of cookies at one time, use two cookie sheets. I have two cookie sheets. It's a good investment. That way you're always putting chilled cookie dough onto a room temperature cookie sheet. And that way the residual heat of the cookie sheet that you just took out will not affect the product that you are now placing on it that is cold. Another essential step to me is having a cookie baller. This cost me less than $5 at Walmart. It's the perfect size and it will come out rounded and I will show you why this is a very essential step. So my cookie dough is nice and firm. I am going to put it on my cookie sheet. I want the cookie to have a round shape when I put it on the cookie sheet. That is one of the tips that will be in the recipe and on the blog because we are going to allow these cookies to cook for eight minutes. Then I will pull the cookies out of the oven, just the rack, and I will press down and then they will cook for two more minutes. Leaving them in this round shape ensures the end product does not spread out and make a thin, flat pancake cookie, but will keep its nice, thick denseness that we want for a cookie. So I'm going to go ahead and put my full amount of cookies on my sheet. I am going to have 12 on here at once. My cookie dough is nice and firm. I'm really having to work hard to get it out and that is what you're looking for, the consistency that you're looking for. Because it's going to allow the cookie to cook in the oven without melting down the butter and the chocolate chips too quickly. Using a cookie baller for this step is also nice because it ensures that your cookies are relatively the same size, which helps promote an even cooking. Okay, so there are our even sized cookie balls. And remember, they are in a ball shape and we want to leave them in this ball shape for eight minutes. So I'm putting them in the oven for eight minutes at 350 degrees. Okay, so the cookies have been in for eight minutes. And they are starting to get brown. I don't know if you can see that or not. At this point, I'm just going to use my hand and gently push just a little bit on each cookie. Just a gentle push. Just to slightly flatten them, not all the way. Now, I am going to put them back into the oven for two more minutes. When I remove the cookies from the oven, the cookie sheet is hot, which means that your cookies will continue to cook a little bit once they're removed from the oven. It's like ordering a medium rare steak. By the time you go to eat it, it will be medium because it will continue cooking on your plate for a little while. So, Always better to have something underdone and let it continue to residually cook. Okay, I am removing them now from the oven. You can see that they are lightly browned. But I'm going to have CJ come in here really tight. So that I can show you what happens. If you come in here really tight, see this pool of white chocolate. If you cook your cookies too long, your white chocolate will liquefy. And we do not want that. 
So I'm going to remove these from my hot cooking surface and put them on the counter. So my third essential step with these cookies. You'll see they, that you might think that they look underdone. Really, they're not. Like I said, they're going to continue to cook. Also, you'll see when you do remove them that the bottoms are brown. That is what we want. You cannot remove these cookies. Sorry. You cannot remove these cookies from the cookie sheet. Not right now. Even when you think that they're slightly cool, do not take these cookies off your cookie sheet and put them onto a cooling rack, which is what I always do for, say, a chocolate chip cookie. Do not do that with the white chocolate macadamia nut cookies. These cookies have to remain on the cookie sheet until they are completely cooled to room temperature. If you try to remove these when they are still warm, they will crumble. I did not do that with my cooled ones. They are completely solid and they have stayed in a solid state. I actually took a, a container to my mother's house and I dropped it on the porch on the way out to the car and they still stayed together. So you have to let them remain on the cookie sheet. And that is why I said you need a second cookie sheet if you're going to make your batch of cookies all in one go round. Hi, CJ. Hi. It's time for cookies. Yep, I see. You know I like to make fancy desserts, but sometimes just a good old classic recipe is what we need. Yeah. So these are white chocolate macadamia nut cookies, and of course they are keto low carb. Yep. What's that? I know you, you made these before. I had the first batch. Mm -hmm. Well, this was not my first batch. And this was <laughs> this is my first were, successful batch. You can see the macadamia nuts. Pretty big chunk right there. Yep. And the white chocolate. It's really good. It's a nice little treat. Um, yeah. I'm sure this would be good with a cup of coffee. Yes, Sorry. or a glass of cold macadamia nut milk or almond milk. Yeah. Yeah, good. A lot of flavor. If I didn't know what they were, I wouldn't know that they were or that they weren't. No. If I didn't know what they were, I wouldn't know that they were any different than... That they were sugar-free. Any other macadamia nut cookie. It's really good. Good. They're not overly sweet. No. But, but they do provide that sweet salty because yeah, they of the do. saltiness of the macadamia nuts. Yeah, they so. do. So the, and the chips give the a sweetness too. But and the nice vanilla punch. The cookie is not overly. The dough is not overly sweet. Yes. So it's good. I like it, baby. Thank you. I know you worked hard on this. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks for joining us again tonight, you guys. We hope that you enjoy the cookies. I know that we definitely are. They're a favorite for a lot of people in my family. So if you would consider subscribing, we would be very grateful because we enjoy having you here. And definitely hit the notification bell because then you will be notified when we upload our new content. We have Keto Conversations on Wednesdays and that's where we get together and talk about different ketogenic topics. Sometimes we have keto food unboxings, um, what we eat on this lifestyle, and just other things, and that is our Wednesday video. And then on Sundays, we release recipes such as this one, and I generally try to have two sweet recipes a month and two savory recipes a month. If you need any of the nutritional information, the full recipe, also macros, other recipe ideas, those are always housed on our blog, and that is cjsketokitchen.com. We are also on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, and we release teaser recipes and photographs of the foods that we're preparing and the foods that we're eating. So definitely join us on those platforms as well.
We hope that you'll come back and see us again next time on CJ's Keto Kitchen. And definitely stick around and watch some more of our videos. They will be coming up in the eye and on the sides. And YouTube will be suggesting more of our videos. So if you would like to see more of our delicious recipes, then definitely hang around. And we'll see you next time.